I'm Olga De Soto. I'm a choreographer, dancer, and dance researcher. And we are in Rio de Janeiro, where I have been presenting uh, Histoire based on the young man. Yeah. Well, Histoire uh, is a particular work for me. It represented um, a moment of change in my relation with the choreography. And the starting point was a commission of a culture gest that a theater in Lisbon they commissioned me to create a short piece to pay homage to the young Menendez, choreography by Roland Petit, which was premiere in 1946 in, at that Champs-Élysées in Paris. And my first reaction was that I was not a good person. I thought they were thinking about Olga Mesa and not Olga de Soto. So I told them, there is a problem here. I'm not Olga Mesa. It has happened before. Yeah, yeah it has happened before. Many people do mistakes. So I'm going to give you their phone number and you can call her, etc. And they said to me, no, no, no. Um, we're thinking about you. So take uh, two weeks and think about it. And first, I was very surprised because my work uh, is very far from Roland Petit aesthetics and Cocteau aesthetics. But uh, I started really asking myself why, uh, wh who, what have they seen in my work to ask me that? Well, so I first I took a paper and I wrote down all the things that I remember. Uh, from the young men and death, and so I did my list. And then I started really watching all the movies that I could find. So I called Video Dance in Paris, I ran to Paris, and I so I think they have three, four movies. And well, they confirm I mean, this work that this short work that I did confirmed that for me, the young men and death wasn't uh, such important work in dance history. I think in French dance history it is, but um, I will I will put other works before the young men and death. But then I start really thinking um, about the way the commission was uh, proposed, and I thought that maybe if I wasn't uh, able to understand it, um, why this piece was so important, it was because uh, maybe I was not in that context and there was something missing that I was not able to understand really what the impact was about because yeah. I was not in that historical context. Yeah. And then, uh, what do you think that this perhaps uh, went in the direction that, because it seems like this has influenced a lot of uh, your work in relationship with perhaps on memory. And also if you can uh, take, talk a little bit about the, the format of the piece that I think is mm -hmm. quite uh, interesting because it becomes something that uh, we can say perhaps it's a choreograph of uh, memories uh, or <laughs> a construction on a stage of certain kind of narratives. So if you can tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, yeah. Well, the first thing is that um, at the beginning, uh, well, finally I have this idea of uh, to look for memories for, uh, from the audience who were there the day of the mm. premiere. So it, to try to see uh, to if, witnesses. <laughs> yes, to ask them why is this work so important? Because I don't understand. So maybe I thought maybe they have really uh, good memories that can explain me. But also it was a kind of how do you say in English? Um, um, un pretexto. Uh, uh, like excuse. Yeah, it yeah, was an excuse. Reason, yeah. yeah, it was for me finally it was an excuse uh, in my work. I mean to work on the young man and death. It was an excuse to ask myself. Uh, questions about the utility of living art, mm -hmm. its definition, uh, the way it uh, survives or it doesn't survive mm -hmm. uh, time through time. And I thought it was a good uh, pretext because the work was uh, in, in principle, uh, the main uh, themes were love, life and death. Mm -hmm. So I think this is common to everybody, so yeah. it has to touch everybody in a way but also that the work was premiered on almost 60 years ago. Yeah. So I thought people had enough uh, time to forget. Yeah. So yeah. let's see what they remember, if they still remember something. Yeah. Um, but at the beginning, I have to say, first, I didn't, want, I didn't know how to find people. Uh -huh. 
second, I, at the beginning, I didn't want to record them. And third, I didn't want to do a movie. Or, I mean, I don't want to work with video. Yeah. Because I think it's a very difficult... Uh, um, how do you say that? I think it's very difficult to work with video on the stage. Yeah. But then I start finding people, and all my friends around were like crazy, telling me, no, you have to record. I mean, yeah. darling, you can't go there. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask questions and write something yeah. down. Yeah. So yeah, they're right, of course. Yeah. So, but I, they, they became uh, kind of a, the protagonist, in a way, of the... They of are. The, they are, yeah. They are. The video is the actor of the, yeah. of the performance, yeah. I think. So, well, uh, I saw I, was, I saw all these uh, little things like recording how how to put the camera, mm -hmm. etc. Which kind of questions and how? Well, that was the first second step, mm -hmm. and the third I start thinking about uh, how to relate with this material. Mm -hmm. And it's true that from the first interview, I was very surprised because um, I didn't know what to. I didn't know what what I was expecting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what people would be able to tell me. Yeah. And in the first first interview, I was just uh, amazed yeah. uh, with the answers that I was listening to. And that the second was more or less the same, and the third too. Yeah. So I really start thinking that s something happened that day. Mm -hmm. Something really happened yeah. with that work. So, but also uh, during the interviews, it was very important for me to try to understand their relation with the work in that context. Mm -hmm. And the historical moment. The historical yeah. moment they, they were living, yeah. like a, a one year more or less after the end of the Second World War. Yeah. Which it means that all of them went through war yeah. in different ways. And they had a very kind of a close relationship with ideas and experience of death yeah. and uh, loss. And, and lost, yeah. yeah. So, um, and people who have been confronted fundamental matters. I was going through the interviews, I, I didn't know yet how I was going to treat that material. So I decided to, read, to transcribe everything to, to be able to analyze really uh, the text, to work on the text, the words and on what was behind the words, which is not so easy to know. I mean, I, don't, I didn't know that people, and you can never know what people are thinking about when they're telling you something, mm -hmm. but you can feel if they are thinking about something else. Yeah. So um, I start analyzing the material, and then the question of how to construct uh, that, mm -hmm how to compose with the, with all those words, start raising. So, in a way, I start working on the video edition and I realized that it was something very chore choreographical mm -hmm. in it. And I, I decided to really to treat it like a choreographical material, yeah. even if it, if it wasn't dance, but yeah, they, yeah. they were talking about dance. Yeah, yeah. And I was working in, in parallel on a possible dance mm -hmm. that could be produced mm -hmm. and then little by little it kind of uh, faded away it faded away because yeah. uh, there was no possible um, there was no room for it yeah. and I think it was um, but for me for example in Histoire there was um, there was a real conflict in terms of uh, meaning that could be produced in their interaction, but also uh, in the way that I was constructing the storytelling, I and the fact in also in taking under consideration the way I wanted to work in the space to fragment the storytelling in the space. For me, it was also a work on. Possibility to, of imagining, mm -hmm. uh, but also which which is one of the bases of the other, yeah. Yeah. and and also about the invisibility in dance. Like, is it possible to create a dance which is invisible? Yeah. So that is just going to be uh, tell. Tell, yeah. <laughs> 
so then whatever idea of choreography becomes a choreograph of our imagination. Okay. And that's it. Yeah. So I wasn't sure that it was possible, but then going through the construction and the, the composition, I think it's a, it's a real question. Uh, how can you relate to documentation today? Uh, how can you uh, travel through it? What do you choose to share, what you don't choose to share? And also for, um, memory, I think in mem working with memory, Oblivion is very important. I mean, um, for me, oblivion is as, impor as important as memory. Yeah. What people doesn't remember yeah. is very, very important. It's yeah. as important. Like and for the example, changes, and also the changes. It's moving. It's, moving. it's uh, memory, is something that moves and evolves through time and changes through time. It's like, for example, in, in histoire, the questions about colors. Yeah. Like everybody remembers <laughs> the right colors. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but they don't remember where they were. Oh wow! But they they were there, red, yeah. white, and black yeah. were there at the end. Yeah. Yellow was the color of the young girl at the beginning. Yeah. But they are they yeah. are moving They're it. Place. Yeah. So this I think is really interesting. But for example, yeah. which is also very interesting with that work with Histoire, yeah. is that almost none of them remember death. Yeah. Huh. But death is in the title. Uh -huh. It's the young man and death. Yeah, yeah. It is in the title, and yeah. there were two deaths. Yeah. It was the death, uh, the death of the, the death of the young man, mm -hmm. the young man, but also there was death as a parent. With the young man and the death at the beginning, um, I didn't know. Well, it, there was a first step for culture jest. It was supposed to be a short piece. Oh. It was a short piece that I showed, but then I decided I wanted to keep working on it because I, I found like eight spectators. I didn't have budget to interview all of them, so I cut, I took uh, the map of France, I cut it into two. And for uh, the big present, the first presentation in Lisbon, I, so for the short piece, I decided to interview just people that were living in the north of France. And then, well, we did the, the show, and then I start trying to find um, money to keep going on, at least to just interview the people that were living in the South. Mm -hmm. But then some people like Kunst uh, Festival des Arts and Centre National de la Danse in Paris heard about the project and they decided to, to co-produce it. So at the end it was a, a process that we, which took like yeah two years mm -hmm. more or less. And at the time I was in parallel working on another project on physical memory, which I decided to split in five years. And, well, people were very surprised about it, but I was like, I have a very particular relation with time, I think. And since I started really doing research on, on memory, physical memory, perceptive memory, embodied memory, etc., I, I, I realized that if I wanted to be honest with my process and my research, research process, I have to respect time. That Things need time mm -hmm. to evolve, and if you want to really research, mm -hmm. you need time to be able to to go from one point to another. Mm -hmm. And if you like, for example, in this other project, which took uh, five years, incorporate ce qui reste dans mon cœur, was an evolutive uh, project. Um, we need time to just get out of the work, live other experiences with other people, and come back like ten months later to see what is still there from mm -hmm. what we did mm -hmm. and how can we uh, construct, what can we construct from starting from what still uh, was still there at that moment. Mm -hmm. But that moment was not the same than two years after. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's something very important to, to take under consideration.